often when you talk about this kind of case, you feel like you're telling the joke uh, good news and bad news, and I'll explain that soon. But the first thing I don't have to explain is that you could tell this is a trachea. You could tell it's bifurcating here into a left and right main stem bronchus. You know that here's the carina, which I believe is either the Latin or Greek word for keel because it looks like a keel of a boat, doesn't it? And the carina and main stem bronchi are a very, very rich place for lymph nodes. And here is a large lymph node. It seems to be separate from the lung. And... Uh, you could see that in many of the thoracic uh, lymph nodes, you could see an abundant amount of this little black anthracotic pigments like you see here and here and here and here. But in this lymph node, there might be some remnants of pigment, perhaps a little bit towards the outside, but at least half of it has this white area, which looks firmer, whiter, and is relatively apigmented relative to the normal. Plus, the lymph node is very much enlarged, too. So... Let's explain why we now have to play good news and bad news. If you really want to think very, very simplistically, which my mind always likes to, think that there's two kinds of uh, cancers of the lung. There's the one called oat cells, uh, which is totally synonymous with the term small cell because oat cells are small. And then there are non-oat cells. And we've already seen the non-oat cells. Those are the squamous. Those are the adenos. Those are the so-called large cells, which have perhaps features and markers of squamous or adenos. And then you have the, non, the oat cells. And this is an oat cell cancer. Oat cell cancer are small cells. They're very dark and low power. They often look like uh, normal lymph nodes or lymphocytes. Uh, but here's the part about the good news and the bad news is. The bad news is oat cell carcinomas behave much, much, much more aggressively nasty than non-oat cells. They kill faster. They grow faster. By the time you see them in the lung, it's usually spread all over the body to such a degree that even if the brain scans are normal, they usually irradiate them prophylactically anyway because oat cells just rapidly metastasize all over the place. That's the bad news. The good news is of all of the different types of cancer of the lung, oat cell, non-oat cell, if you want to think simplistically, the oat cells are the most often drastically responsive to chemotherapy. So now that we got the basic info down pat, let's look at the classic features of oat cells. The first classic feature is that there is such minimal cytoplasm in the uh, oat cell is that whenever you see a nest of cells like this, it looks like it's, you know, 99% nuclei. Uh, secondly, because they are very small cells and often round, you could see why we might have mistaken this for uh, lymphocytes on low power, like you see here, but on high power, you could see they are just irregular nests of cells growing in all directions. Another feature of oat cell, and I don't know whether we'll see it here or not, I'll go to a couple random places, is that they grow so fast, because we already told you they're the nastiest, they often outgrow their blood supply and become necrotic, and you could just see ghosty outlines of cells. And uh, unfortunately, this particular oat cell doesn't look like we see too many little necrotic nests but a necrotic nest of oat cells would look like a non-necrotic nest, except perhaps you could barely differentiate nucleus from cytoplasm uh, because it's all kind of like in a uh, uh, granular haze. But in this case, we do not have uh, too much. Another thing is, you know, even though some purists can tell you there are differences, just remember that whenever you use the word small cell carcinoma, you're basically using the same name uh, as the term oat cell. They're, for all practical purposes, they're synonymous, and I want to thank you very much.